I bought a Bitcoin miner from Compass Mining back in December of 2021 for an all-in cost of around $16,000. I'm finally up and mining with Compass and I wanted to give you guys some updates on the videos that I put out back in 2021 and 2022. And so today in this video, we're gonna be covering the logistics of getting set up with Compass Mining, all the monthly costs and how much money I've made so far. And then finally, I'll be giving you guys a recommendation about whether Compass Mining is something that you guys should be using or not. And if you're just here for the recommendation, I really don't wanna waste your time with all the other content that we're gonna be talking about in this video. I really wouldn't recommend compass mining to anyone, regardless of what your goals are. At the end of the day, there are just better, less stressful ways for you to be making money. And so if you were just here for the recommendation, go down below and smash the like button on your way out. It does really help out the channel. And for everyone else, let's go ahead and jump into the logistics of getting set up with compass mining. So as you can see here, here's the original receipt that I got from buying my miner through compass on December 2nd of 2021. We can see here, it was a ant miner S19 XP 140 terahash that was set to go online in August of 2022. I paid $15,000 for the hardware and then a couple hundred bucks here for the first month hosting prepayment and the hosting deposit. This brought my all-in cost after taxes to around $16,500. If we scroll down here, we can see that I can join the Compass community on Discord, which has since been disbanded. I think because they were dealing with so much negative press and they couldn't really handle all of the requests and all of the negative feedback that they were getting through the Discord at the time. And it was very frustrating because if we search through my email here for more emails from Compass Mining, we can see that about every week since I ordered my Bitcoin miner, I've been getting even more advertisements from Compass Mining about the new miners that I could be buying that of course won't go online anytime soon. So that entire process was very frustrating, I think for me and for a lot of other people. And that's probably one of the reasons that led them to disbanding the Discord. So at this point, if you have a miner with Compass Mining and you're not sure when your miner is finally going to come online, you can go over to this link that I'll have down in the description that shows their facility updates. They do these about once a week and they have been very consistent with these. These are just sort of blog posts that when you click into them, them. It will show you the current mining activities at all of the different facilities and hopefully when your mining deployment is going to be deployed. So you're getting bits and pieces of little update information here. It can make you feel good like, you know, if you were in mini bundle one, obviously it seems like your entire bundle is going to get deployed soon. But if you're in, you know, Lone Star 2, unit 6 is 70% deployed. It, waiting week for week for these blog posts to come out, there's better things I think for you to do with your time and that are better for your mental health than like waiting for Compass Mining to post another blog post about your miner has been delayed another week, your miner has been delayed another month, et cetera, et cetera. Eventually your miner should come online and a couple months before it comes online, Compass will send you an email telling you that you need to set up a mining pool and link that mining pool with the miner that you purchased through Compass. Setting up a mining pool with F2 pool was very simple. You can see the network status of the Bitcoin network and when the next difficulty adjustment will be. And then if you come up here to the revenue tab, you can see how much Bitcoin you made yesterday, how much Bitcoin you're estimated to make today, what your total payout in Bitcoin has been, the total amount of Bitcoin that you've made so far, and then your total balance on F2 pool that is yet to be withdrawn to your Bitcoin wallet. F2 pool only allows withdrawals of 0.005 Bitcoin. So I have about two withdrawals stacked up in here right now that I could manually do, or I could turn automatic withdrawals back on. I'm in the middle of moving my cold storage right now. So that's the reason that this balance is a little unusually high, but normally every 0.005 Bitcoin you have, you would get to automatically withdraw that to whatever wallet of your choice. If we come back to the home tab here in F2 pool, and then we change this to the one day view instead of the 30 minute view, you can see that there were days where my miner was not mining. And we'll get into this more a little bit later in the profitability section of the video. But just from a user experience perspective, it can be very difficult to get that notification on your phone from the F2 app that says, hey, your miner has been offline for the last 10 minutes, the last two days, the last however long it's been offline. And then knowing that there's really no way for you to immediately contact customer support over at Compass Mining for you to find out why exactly your miner is offline. You can see here in this blog post article, they've tried to address the different reasons that your miner has gone offline and they do compensate you sometimes with downtime credits, but it seems very intermittent and random how often those downtime credits are actually getting applied. And in my experience, it has not at all compensated me for the amount of downtime that my miners have had while I've been mining with Compass. So overall, the experience of using F2 pool has been very easy. I am interested in switching mining pools at some point and comparing and contrasting F2 pool to maybe something like Luxor to see if I do end up over months at a time making more money on Luxor or F2 pool. It seems like Luxor is really diving into this whole ordinals thing and trying to get the most profitable blocks that they can mine. Whereas F2 pool, I haven't really heard anything from F2 pool about trying to maximize MEV on Bitcoin. If you are interested in me making a video comparing 
my experience with Luxor to F2 pool, definitely leave that down in the comments below and I'll make a video if there's enough interest. Finally, when your miner starts mining and you've set your default pool here to F2 pool or whatever pool it is that you choose, this will be the view that you see in your compass mining dashboard. You can see I have my one ant miner S19 XP, my F2 pool, and now I'm getting spammed with ads from compass mining to purchase a hardware protection plan. This is basically insurance for your miner. And you can see here, they bring you to the screen where it just doesn't tell you at all what the coverage is. So if I just click this and then click on my miner and then click purchase coverage, I think, yeah, they still don't tell you what the insurance is or what it does. I could just click generate invoice and pay and it will tell me nothing at all about what the insurance is or how I'm covered or you know any of the guarantees or terms of the insurance. I think this is a super like horrible UI and I think maybe I've just paid for it. It's like totally ridiculous. So hopefully I can turn that off. Really the user experience here on Compass Mining is, is pretty horrible. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to turn that off later on. You'll see later in the video how bad the unit economics are if you pay for their insurance. And then again, I find it totally ridiculous that I was able to just go through that process and they don't once explain to you what the terms of that insurance are. I think if you do open up this like shop hardware tab here and then go to products and then compass protection right here, it will tell you what the terms of the insurance are, but really it should be bringing you to the screen when you try to purchase the insurance through the dashboard, because as you just saw, you can totally purchase the insurance, apparently like I just did, without ever seeing what is actually covered by the insurance plan. When I saw how high this insurance cost was, I thought to myself that I could probably get insurance for a much lower amount. If I just called an insurance company and tried to get insurance through the insurance company instead of through compass mining. But when I called my huge tier one insurance company, first they told me that I needed to get a bunch of address and other information from compass mining. And so I opened a ticket with compass mining. It took them about two or three weeks to respond to my ticket. And when they responded to my ticket, they told me that compass is only able to share any facility location, including zip code and information to insurers and or brokers and not to end customers. So this means that they wanted me to have my insurance company reach out directly to them to cover my miner on an insurance policy and that they were unwilling to give me, the owner of the miner, any of the details of where my miner is located. And so when I told this to my giant tier one insurance company, they basically told me that they weren't going to underwrite the risk of this miner because I couldn't give them any of the information and that this was a kind of risk that they were uncomfortable taking. The fact that a tier one insurance company is not willing to underwrite this risk to me is a major red flag. And then probably an even giant or major red flag is that compass mining is not able to provide any location information to end customers and will only share that information with insurance and or brokers. When I was talking to the insurance agent, they were really confused by this too. The fact that compass mining was unwilling to share the address with me because eventually if we did create an insurance policy, that address would be available for me to see on the insurance policy, obviously. Overall, the feeling that you get when you're using compass is a feeling of total powerlessness and inability to make changes with any of the things that you're interacting with on the website. The fact that I just purchased that insurance coverage and there's no way to cancel it now outside of probably opening one of these support tickets and hopefully someone gets back to me in the next three weeks. That feeling of total helplessness is reason number one why you probably should never interact with this company. And it's definitely the number one thing that they as a company could improve on. And on the website, you'll see things like call us now at this 800 number. If you do go ahead and call this 800 number, this is what you'll get. Thank you for calling Compass Mining. For sales, please press one. For support, please press two. Thank you for calling Compass. Please hold while we find an available agent. This call may be recorded for quality purposes. Thank you for calling Compass Mining. We are currently only addressing tickets filed via your Compass Mining dashboard. We hope to open this voice service again soon. Thanks. There you go calls over. And this level of really awful customer support, it might be worth putting up with if you were making a ton of money on the back end actually mining the Bitcoin. But as we'll see in a second here, the unit economics of compass mining don't really work out either. All right, guys, so here is all of the mining data that I've gotten from the first about four months of using compass. My compass miner started mining on February the 10th. And today that I'm recording the video is June the 3rd. And so over here, you'll see how much terahash my miner was mining every day. And then you'll see the amount of Bitcoin that it mined on that day 
and then the cumulative amount of Bitcoin that it's mined since it started mining. And then in this E column, there are the costs that I paid and when I paid them and then what those costs were. And then you can see here the days that my miner was just totally offline. This day, there was no explanation for why my miner was offline. And then as we come down here, these five days in a row that my miner was offline was because I paid my hosting fee late. And when I didn't pay that hosting fee, I was given no notification from Compass Mining that my hosting fee was late. My miner just went offline, it looks like four or five days later. And it wasn't until I went onto my Compass Mining dashboard on my desktop computer that I saw that my payment had been late for May and that I was assessed a late fee for not making that payment on time. And so that's just another example of how horrible the user experience is using Compass Mining. If I come over to billing now, I can actually show you, I can demo to you, you know, what your different options are for payment because I accidentally just bought this stupid insurance thing. So if I click on this and then I click on pay now, we'll see that we have the option for ACH, credit card, crypto, or lightning. But then when we come over to automatic payments, we only have the ability to do recurring ACH payments, which is kind of a pain in the butt. It would be nice if you could put these payments on a credit card of some type. But if you are going through this, I highly recommend that you do link an ACH bank account because if you don't, you could end up with a bunch of days of downtime and no communication about why your miner is offline, which I think situations like this will extra mess with your head because there will be days regardless of what you do that like your miners offline anyway, this entire 24 hours it was offline for part of this for 16 day it was offline. And you can see days down here, like those two days, it was mostly offline. And if there are already legitimate, legitimate reasons that your miner is going to be offline and Compass Mining is never going to communicate to you why these things are happening in the first place, it really makes sense for you to have recurring ACH set up so that you don't end up in a situation where you haven't paid something and they haven't told you that you haven't paid that thing. So after I put all this data into the spreadsheet, I made a couple of charts here. You can see here, this is the Bitcoin amount that was mined per Day, you can see the amount of downtime that I was dealing with in those different situations. And then you can see the cumulative amount of Bitcoin that was mined over time. Obviously, these flat periods correspond with the periods where there was no Bitcoin mining happening. And then right off the bat, you can see that no matter what else we've done so far, the miner has depreciated by 66% because I basically bought it at the peak of the market. I'm estimating here the tax break that you would get from buying a miner like this. And you can see the assumption that I made there in this assumption tab. I'm assuming a 17% tax break bracket for annual incomes of $100,000. And you could edit this information for yourself over on NerdWallet with some different tax bracket. And I'll have a link to a public version of this spreadsheet down in the description. And so that would give you a break even cost here of whatever the cost of your miner is, you know, minus the tax break. Next, I had the purchase date here of December of 2021. It was supposed to go online August of 2023, but it obviously didn't go online until February of 2023. So over here in the assumptions, I have the fact that it was delayed nearly six months between August 2022 and go live of 2023. The number of days that it's been literally mining zero Bitcoin has been about 5% of the total number of days that it's been on so far for these past four months. And then finally, insurance here. I assume that insurance from some normal insurance company would be cheaper than the insurance that Compass Mining is giving you because I think that they're trying to skim as much money off the top of this operation as possible. Or that's the feeling that I've gotten when they assess fees for things like AC that in my experience with other companies should be totally free. I imagine this insurance would be cheaper through some other company, but I haven't found an insurance company that's even willing to underwrite the risk. And the process through Compass Mining has been so bad from a user experience perspective. I'd be really interested to hear down in the comments if any of you guys have been able to buy third-party insurance for your Compass Mining miners. And then the miner that I bought, it was expensive, but like, you know, $16,000 is like not gonna ruin someone's life. But people out there have put hundreds of thousands of dollars into Compass Mining mining miners, and I would be very uncomfortable making an investment that large without having any insurance whatsoever. Ultimately, I think the insurance right now is not a usable option given how the unit economics of compass mining are shaking out. If I make this a little bit bigger here for you. Over here on the left, we have the actuals of what I've been dealing with so far. And then over here on the right, we have a monthly average of basically the last four months that I've been doing here on compass mining. So we can see firstly here that I've made about 0.04 Bitcoin between February and June of this year at an average Bitcoin price of about 26 
$6,000 per Bitcoin. This has given me a revenue of about $1,000 and I have costs of about $541 through Compass's hosting fees, which gives me a net income of about $550 over these last four months, which is giving me a break even of about 90.45 months or about seven and a half years, which is a pretty horrible investment if you ask me. I think a reasonable break even for a product like this would be something around 18 months. But to get to that reasonable break even price, you're going to have to have an average Bitcoin price over that period of time of $136,946. Obviously, if you start to move your time horizon out a little bit more and you say that maybe now you're willing to wait five years to get a break even, now you only need a break even price of about $41,000, which seems a little more like in the ballpark of something that could happen. But it really highlights the problem with this entire compass mining business model. And that's that unless you're hyper bullish on the price of Bitcoin, none of this makes sense from a unit economics perspective. If the price of Bitcoin stays exactly the same for the next five years, which is completely possible, then this investment is going to take me 90 months or seven and a half years for it to make any sense. And that doesn't factor in anything about like the total hash rate going up and my share in the hash network going down and like better miners coming online that are way better than my miner is currently or any of the other risks that are associated with mining that we covered in this video that I'll leave up in the cards. So at this point, I'm all in for a total cost of around $17,000 on this project. And my cost basis for mining these 0.04 Bitcoins is over $400,000 per Bitcoin. If we exclude the cost of the miner in the first place, which is like, this is wishful thinking. This doesn't make any economic sense to do the analysis this way. But if we did it this way, we could say that the recurring costs of $541 are giving me a cost basis on the Bitcoin that I've mined here of only $13,000, which when you look at it through that lens is a really great deal. But again, that's just being willfully ignorant of the fact that we paid all of this money for the miner back in December of 2021. The other big variable that's not included in my actuals for the last several months has been that I've paid nothing for insurance on my miner. And if we start to factor in the cost of insurance for a miner and we divide all of these numbers you know, to what they would be over a single month, we'll see that every month we're making about $79 and that our break even is gonna take 157 months or about 13 years, which in my mind, there's no possible way that this miner is still functional 13 years from now. And again, now that you're including the insurance, your reasonable break-even price is about $238,000, which means that if Bitcoin gets up to an average price of $238,000, now you've broken even over the next 18 months, which in my opinion, that's not gonna happen. Even if you take this number out to five years, you're still getting a reasonable price for break-even at $71,000 per Bitcoin, which is literally above the all-time high for Bitcoin just to break even in the next five years. So again, the insurance for this product, it's like, yes, should you insure your very valuable miner? Of course you should insure it. Insurance is generally good, but the price of the insurance in this case is making the break-even time horizon for this product like so unreasonably large that at this point, are you just better off eating the upfront cost of the miner if the miner <laughs> the bet at this point and just not dealing with the insurance whatsoever? So just some takeaways here at the end of the video. A lot of people online sell this idea of passive income and like go drink Mai Tais on the beach and you never have to work again. And all of that is a super attractive idea to people, but unfortunately it's complete bull. No one is going to save you. You have to save yourself. A lot of people online think compass mining is a scam and there's an entire Twitter account out there called mining scandals that just reposts compass mining scandals. And there are a ton of class action lawsuits out there against compass mining. Some people who have lost even more money than I have using compass mining probably disagree with me, but I I personally don't think that compass mining is a complete fraud. To me, it seems like a legitimate company that got way out over their skis back in 2021, doubled down on some of their promises, and then kind of f***ed up their whole operation. The communication from compass mining is absolutely horrible, which I think is the biggest issue with the company right now. The three big horrible examples of communication from the company in my mind are not telling clients the address of the miner so that we can get independent insurance quotes, not telling clients when bills are due or when their miners are being turned off and then generally not communicating why miners are being shut off in the first place. And then finally, sending these ridiculous out of touch emails, trying to get people to purchase more miners when the miners that we bought in the first place, sometimes up to 18 months ago, are still not online. So ultimately, I would recommend that you don't get involved in compass mining whatsoever, unless like five years from now, they've totally turned the company around and have
have demonstrated that they have a real working communications team that can deal with these issues that I've just presented. It just doesn't make sense to make such a big investment like this and then to have such little control or communication about the investment that you made. And then if you're watching this video far into the future, I would recommend that you be wary of this company and the economics that I just presented here so that you don't end up in a situation like me and all of the other people that bought miners back at the peak of miner prices in 2021. It will be interesting to see in the future if Compass Mining is still around at all, if they've learned their lesson and stop over promising things and they've turned around their communication game, or if they'll run the exact same playbook in the next bull market and mess everything up again. It is still probably the worst investment of my life so far. Like and share the video if you found this content helpful and check out this video over here to see my initial thoughts on Compass Mining. I love you all. See you next week. Wah!